My guest has been in the news because his company, Corandum Limited, is accused of having received 180 million shillings in payments of the youth fund without having delivered any services. He is executive director, Mukuri Ngamau. Thank you so much for being here. How did you get this youth fund contract? Well, um, like any other business person, um, I go out and uh, join forums of, of, of potential business customers and uh, competitors. Right. And it was during such a forum that I got to understand what the youth, youth fund is doing. And uh, in understanding what they were doing, I understand, and understood their structure. And, and, and I saw a few gaps and opportunities for me as a business person okay. uh, to pitch for business. Uh, I got in touch with the people who were there, who told me that the, the person who really could make the decisions was the CEO. Um, after doing some research after that uh, function, I called the CEO and I asked for an appointment. She was very kind to give me the appointment. And I went and explained to her who we are and what we thought we could partner with. So you pitched your business to the CEO? Yes, Catherine indeed. Yes. As I've done, as I'm sure many other business people do, looking for business opportunities. Are yes, you familiar indeed. with the public procurement regulations and uh, open source and single sourcing and open tendering? You know, at this point, I was looking to, to, for an in into a business. And I knocked many, many doors. Uh, this is not the first one I've knocked. And that's all I did. I walked in and said, I would like to work for you people, and this is what I think. And the CEO said, fine, we, we need what you're selling. Well, no, she said, no, thank you for letting me know you can do this and uh, all the things you've told me, good things. Put it in writing because mm -hmm. ultimately the decision comes from not just myself but the management and, uh, and, and I did that. So what exactly were you pitching the CEO? If you understand what, where the youth fund is, they, 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 they are a financial institution who right now don't have the structures to really execute the mandate efficiently. And that was the opportunity I saw. And I went in and told her, look, uh, we are able to give you a strategy that will move your organization from where it is to the kind of financial institution it needs to be to serve your customers who are the youth. That's really what we pitched, an ICT ERP solution. So what you've said publicly is you offered the, the youth fund an ICT strategy and an ERP. I offered to do that for them, yes. Did you do that? Yes, we did. Were there any other companies involved in this, in this process or it is just you who walked in and you got the tender? I wouldn't know because uh, as, as you know, when you go tendering, you put in your tender. I don't know how many other people put in their tenders. We don't go and ask, by the way, now that we've put in our tender, how many other people are putting their tender. The job you got was never publicly advertised? Not to my knowledge. So it was given to you as the single person who came in through the door and asked for this job? You know, once again, I must say, um, we pitched... <coughs> Excuse me. And we were invited. We, we, we didn't go and find out who else pitched. <laughs> I mean, of what interest would that be to us? Have you ever done the same with an, any, other, any other government agency, any other parastatal? I've pitched many parastatals, yes. Did any of them give you a job without going through the uh, tendering process? No, usually they say, you know, apply, you know, sign up, and then we'll get back to you. Because there's a, there's a process of being pre-qualified, there's a process of going through the, the, the necessary regulations before you get a government tender, right? I would assume so, but what I would assume is that uh, every institution knows the procedures they need to follow to get a job done. Um, me as a vendor will sell to anyone who walks through my door. I will not ask you, you know, before I sell you a pen, uh, have you gotten three quotations? Has your board approved that? If you walk into my shop and say, I want to buy a pen, I'll give you a quotation if you choose to buy it. Then really it's upon you to know the processes that you need to uh, execute to buy. Uh, I was requested to do a service. And uh, if you read the documents I've offered to you, the, 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 the contract was actually approved by the board. I can only assume this board knows the procedures that needed to be followed. And they gave me the contract and I, and I, and I did the job. You didn't think the way this was awarded to you was irregular or unprocedural? I think, do you mind me referring Go to... Go ahead. I would just like to refer to, to something. Because, uh, as, have you found it? Yes, yes. Right, go ahead. Reference is made to your letter dated 9th June 2014. The board, during its 51st meeting held on the 6th August 2014, approved that management of the fund bring on board consultancy services 
for the design of a comprehensive ERP system and ICT strategy for the fund. This was based on the above reference letters from yourselves. Now, now, once a board writes to you and says this, I don't know which business person will then say, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to give you anything. I want you to write to me and have your board write to me and have, I don't know who else write to me and, and tell me if you have followed the procedure. We got a letter with the support of the board and we proceeded. In ordinary language, what is an ERP exactly? Enterprise Resource Planning. This, this basically says, um, this is, these are the resources you have and you have a goal. Either these resources can get you there or you need to add on resources. And how do you plan and structure these resources to achieve a certain goal? Had you ever delivered an ERP to any other organization before? We've done business plans, which include some of ERPs, but not to this extent. Why didn't you then go ahead and contract more of the better known ERP providers, SAP or Oracle, for instance? What's wrong with any other person? You could contract anyone you choose. This is uh, the partner that I know and I'm confident with, and I've I felt comfortable to work with him. So which partner was this? He was called Donnie Collins. Yes. Did you then go ahead and deliver this ERP? Oh, yes, indeed. And we have documentation here, which I've provided to you, showing the delivery of the same. The board says there was no delivery. In fact, the Cabinet Secretary, Cecily Karaoke, has said on record there was no output at all. Oh, uh, as I've provided to you, I have letters from the fund receiving the work. And I would be very surprised they would say any otherwise, uh, because then what were they paying for, really? That's number one. I think I recall from the interview of the CEO at the PIC that she acknowledged that indeed she gave the job and that the job was delivered and passed on to the user department. I think that's on record, I should believe. Then you were paid. Was the, the value of your contract 180 million shillings? About 181, actually. 181 million shillings. Yes, indeed. Was this all paid according to plan when the work had been done? We actually started being paid uh, two to three months after the job was done. So we finished the work, we invoiced, we waited, they paid us. How come, mm -hmm. what, what was the running balance on your Chase Bank account before this youth fund monies came through? The last, I think the last statement before these funds came in was about 3,000 bob. Only 3,000 shillings was in your account? So it was not a very active account? Not extremely active, no. Is it because you've never done a job of this magnitude? Well, no, we've done other jobs. We've, we've done other jobs. It's just that this account was a new account. We had opened it the previous year, and we were still building funds through it. Are you primarily an IT service provider as Corandum? No, we are actually in telecoms. That is our primary business. Telecoms infrastructure and uh, networking. So how, how did you have the competence to offer an IT service? Uh, through our partnership with a chief consultant, we were able to offer the service. Is it correct to say that maybe you didn't deliver anything because you didn't have competence in this area to start with? I think uh, something was delivered and was received by the letters you have, and uh, the user department must have approved it for us to get paid. Within the accounts, uh, your accounts at Chase Bank and Standard Chartered Bank, a lot of these monies then went to property development companies or companies that are not directly related with the, what you had delivered at the youth fund. How can you explain that? Um, I don't know. When you p get your salary, <laughs> you use it in whatever you want to do. You may be as a journalist and you might buy, t buy a farm. Right. I don't think it would be unreasonable for people to say, oh, why would a journalist want to buy a farm? Uh, once you've been paid for services you've been given, it's your money to choose how to invest. But these were company accounts. They were not your individual accounts, were they? Yes, but companies invest. I don't know what items you would like to point out. I, I want to ask about three specific companies. There's Dutch's Arc Development Limited. There's um, Gig Savvy Limited, and I think this is Gig Tyke mm -hmm. Limited. Yes. Most of these money, several million shillings, and I think as much as 50 million went into some of these companies. I think you need to be a bit more accurate. I think the 50 million went to Dutch's Park right. to buy a, an investment property, which can only appreciate. So I think that's a good investment. Was that a company investment or an individual no, investment? No, that's a company investment. What kind of, what kind of uh, property is it? It's a, prop well, a flat. It's the flat. Yes. Why is a company that's involved in uh, construction investing in a flat? Why is a company involved in construction investing in Kenya Airways shares? You're a civil engineer. Yes, by training. You build houses. And roads. And roads. Yes. In fact, that's what you've been doing since, what, 2002? And infrastructure, yes, and uh, telecom infrastructure. So this youth fund instance was the very first time you were doing something 
IT related? Of this ERP ICT, yes. Why now? Why not now? When, when do you start? Do you start when you're 50, when you're 60, when you're 30? When you get an opportunity, you go ahead, you make sure you deliver the goods, client is happy, you get paid. The CEO of the Youth Fund, the, uh, the former CEO, um, Catherine Namuya, told the PIC there was pressure, there was pressure from the board to make these payments to your company. Mm. Did you pressure anybody within the board? I have no contact with, with that. And I think uh, the, she would have to explain herself. Because I was not part of the board, I do not know how they work in the board, um, so I cannot speak to that. Did you have any personal relationship with Bruzo Diambo, the chairman, or anybody else within the Youth, youth Fund board? I've, I've made it very clear. I've known Bruce from my university days. He used to run clubs in Mombasa, and that's why I met him. So he's not a stranger to me. But we're not personal friends that, you know, we'll sit and have a coffee or something. But you did know each other from back oh, then? Yeah, of course, as I know many people. Yes, I've known Bruce. Is that why you got this youth fund job? I don't think he was at all, as far as I know, involved. Well, he did chair the board, which, as you said, wrote to you and gave you this contract yes, without yes. following due procedure. Mm -hmm. Well, as far as I know, I had no discussion whatsoever, whatsoever with him on this project. So whatever happened within the board and the CEO, really they must speak for themselves. But no, I had no involvement with him. In this entire process, did you do your business ethically? I believe so. Totally believe so. Were you paid for money? Were you, the monies you paid, 180 million shillings, were they for services you had rendered? I know I keep going back to this, but it's important it's because at the center of this whole argument is whether or not you were paid for services you gave. I, I think, as I said, once again, you have the documents, yes. and it shows that the, there was something delivered. Right. I think that, is a, that, that really is all we can go by, because someone received something mm -hmm. and then paid for it. For me, I delivered something and I have a letter showing that it was delivered. Mm -hmm. I think it's only the person who received it, the buyer, who can then answer that question as to why they received these goods and paid for them. On what, my part, I delivered. What is odd is that when you got paid for these monies, you didn't pay this IT consultant partner of yours. You bought property. Yes, indeed. Isn't that odd? Not at all. The circumstances were, if you understand the agreement with us, is that he would be paid on completion of payments. Mm -hmm. He happened to pass away before the payments were completed. We soon after that tried to get in touch with their people, for them, for the next of kin, to give us instructions on how to proceed. In the meantime, we've invested in something that I believe will appreciate value, and we are ready to move when they are ready to give us instructions. So your partner in this case has not been paid yet? Not no, even, not, not, not his estate? Because no, his estate, we, we, yeah, obviously, we, ha we wait for instruction from his estate. Wouldn't you put this money in abeyance until such a time when you could get in touch with his, his estate or somebody else? Because there's some movement between your standard chartered and Chase Bank accounts within themselves, but you're paying three different property related companies but not your partner that actually did the work as you said whatever happens the money is appreciating that's the bottom line what we're trying to do is get value from the money we have keeping it in an account where we'll get three percent doesn't help us at all and i don't think it's a clever business decision if you have 10 shillings in your pocket you look for the best investment you can make until when you need that money to come through right now as you all know property is doing well and and that's why I invested in property has Corandam done any other IT project since then? No, after all this happened, then we've just slowed down. I mean, there's been so much on press. We're not moving much now. But this was in 2014. So in, 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 in the years after that, in the, in the years that followed, two years later, nothing else IT related? No, we've pitched. I mean, we do hope that we'll get work. We keep pitching. I'm out there every day trying to get a contract, trying to get contracts, and, and I believe it will come through. Yeah. Are you an honest businessman? Yes, indeed. Why do you say that? Because I'm honest. I've never been in this situation before. Again, as I said, I don't even understand why I'm in this situation because I actually got a contract. I executed the contract and I got paid on the contract. You got a contract really? that was issued, was given unprocedurally according to public procurement regulations. But, but I've got to ask you a question and we need to be honest about this because it's, it's, it's very simple to start pushing blame this way and that way. You as a business person, approach someone who says, I like what you're selling, sell it to me. The question we honestly have to ask is, is it, is it you as the vendor who goes and says, I cannot sell this to you unless you for, explain to me everything? Or is it the, the, the responsibility of the buyer 
to make sure that whatever they need to fulfill this purchase is done. We actually were given a contract by the fund. And there's a board that approved that contract. And on the board is what? I believe there sits people from the parent ministry. I believe there sits, from now what I understood, people from the uh, state corporations, something. The guys who govern the corporations, state corporations. If the board would see it fit to give this contract, I don't think a business person would say, you know, okay, I'm not happy with the board giving me this business. Can you please now go back to government and get them to write me a letter? And you didn't raise an alarm, yet you've been in business for 10 years building roads, ETC, some of them, I believe, for government agencies, and this process had never happened before in your over 10 years in business. The moment the board was invoked and that there was a board sitting and a board minute, I believed that the board, in their wisdom, had satisfied themselves that indeed this was a job they approved to be done. I do not see how much more I would have then gone back to say, no, I will not do this job unless you satisfy, I don't know what questions. Did you give a bribe to get this contract? No, not at all. Have you ever given a bribe in your business? No. In fact, perhaps that's why we haven't grown so fast. But we don't do that kind of work. So you have satisfied yourself that everything was above board and you should not be in this situation to start with? No, I don't think it's me who should be in question. We were asked to do a job. We were given a legal contract, binding. We delivered and it was received by letters I've shared with you and we were paid. I think the, 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 that is, what more can a business person want? What would happen if you were to end up in court with, uh, on charges of, say, conspiracy to defraud a government agency based on how this contract was handled? Once again, it's, it remains the same. Any person can walk in and ask, pitch for a job, and if they're given a contract, I don't see how then you'd go around and say, I won't take this contract until I get a letter from the minister, or I don't know where I would want a letter from. If the board has sat down and in a minute recorded of a session said, give this person the contract to supply, truly I don't see which business out there would say, no, we shall not supply, right? It is the duty of the procuring agency to fulfill whatever mandates they must. For us, what we have to do is sign a contract and make sure we deliver on the contract. If we don't deliver, we don't get paid. I mean, that's bottom line. If you pay and you haven't delivered a product, then you have a problem. And I, I really believe that there should be a problem. If we had not delivered, I, I shouldn't be having this conversation, should I? But we delivered and we have the documents to show that it was delivered. All right, so the, the complication in this whole situation is he said, she said, which is the, the CEO has had her bet. You have said yours, the, the cabinet secretary. And it's, for those of us who watch it, it's difficult to tell who's telling the truth and who's being economic, economic with the I, truth. I don't know if it's he, he said, she said, because I have the documents. You have a copy now. Right. It's not said. It's in writing. For me, it's all in writing. It is in writing, but it has been called fraud. It has been called, there's an, a company that got, got paid fraud. money for okay. work that was not delivered. Fraud, then you'd have to explain what would be the fraud here. Would it be that I got a letter and I delivered? Where is the fraud in that? If there is question to the documents, perhaps that's what you're alluding to. If there is questions to the documents, then the authors of the documents must explain the The themselves. accusation is collusion between you and either the CEO or somebody on the board or somebody else who's got the right influence to be able to give you a job which you did not get in the right procedure as laid down in the public procurement regulations. I, I don't know about collusion because, as I said earlier, I had no involvement. I was not in any of those board meetings when the decisions were made. If someone claimed that they were put under pressure, they, they as is in everything, must explain themselves. I could walk out of here and say uh, the NTV people were abusive to me. How then do we come back and say you are abusive? I must substantiate that. Right. Otherwise, what you end up having is mob justice. Anyone can cry wolf and we all jump. I, I think uh, it's only fair that uh, those who have said things d explain that. For me, I, I, I am comfortable in my contracts and in the law that I did get a contract and I did deliver on it. And uh, the, the client saw fit after receiving the, our reports to pay us. If there was an issue there, then perhaps they should deal with it at that level. Yeah. We're going to leave it there. Thank you so much, Mukuri. I pre appreciate your time. Not at all. It was very fascinating. Mukuri Ngamau, Executive Director of Quarantum Limited, at the center of that 180 million shilling payment from the youth fund, which is being contested. We're going to be right back.